Hey music lovers, welcome to another video. Thank you so much for taking time out to watch me talk about music, which is something that I love and I know that you guys do too. That's why I call you music lovers because hey, we're all in this, right? Because we love one thing, we love music and uh, we love talking about it, we love going to see it live. And that's what I'm doing in this video, talking about a live show that I really enjoyed last week from Adrian Ballou. I haven't seen Adrian in quite some time. Of course, he uh, used to be in King Crimson. He was in that band for nearly 30 years. Uh, outside of Robert Fripp, the founder of the band, uh, he is the longest tenured member of Crimson. And uh, it's a shame that he didn't make the new lineup, uh, which is currently out on the road. But, uh, you know, he's got a quite impressive career. You know, nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, Adrian Ballou, one thing you can say about Adrian is that he has worked with some of the most innovative players uh, and artists of our time. I mean, he was founded by Frank Zappa. Uh, Frank Zappa uh, was happened to be in Nashville doing a show. That's where Adrian lives. And um, Zappa popped into this pub. Uh, just after a show to blow off some steam, he sees Adrian Ballou performing with his band Sweetheart. Uh, and he, by the end of the night, basically asks Ballou if he'd be interested in auditioning for his band. Adrian gets the gig. He goes on tour with Zappa. He plays on one of Zappa's albums called Cheek Your Booty, which is a great album from the late 70s. Uh, and it's got this tune on it called City of Tiny Lights. And uh, it's, it's actually a song that Ballou plays in this show. I'll get to that a little bit later on. So he's on tour with Zappa. They're playing in Europe and he catches the eye of Brian Eno, who's a producer working with David Bowie in the mid to late 70s. And so uh, Eno sees Ballou and, and he calls David Bowie. He says, you've got to go check out this guitar player. So when they go to Berlin at their show there, uh, David checks him out. Of course, Blue comes off stage because Frank Zappa is doing this really long guitar solo as he's often known for doing. Uh, and he sees David Bowie and Iggy Pop watching the show from the side. And so he goes over to Bowie, introduces himself and Bowie offers him a job, which he accepts, you know, when he's done with Frank. And so he goes on to work with David Bowie. And, uh, you know, one of the things he talks about is how when he got to work with David Bowie, of course he went on tour for the uh, Heroes album, but then he began work on the Lodger album, which is a obscure kind of a Bowie album from the later 70s. But Bowie and Eno had Ballou in a room by himself that only Bowie and Eno could see him and they could talk to him, but Ballou could not see them. And they basically just told Ballou, just play, just start start playing. And Baloo was like, well, what key am I playing? What am I doing? And they were like, just do it. And so Baloo just started playing. And so they wound up taking his guitar parts and they, you know, made a composite of them and they spread them out over a few songs on the album, which was a real eye opener for Baloo. You know, he had never worked with anybody quite like that. He had never worked with anybody like Frank Zappa, who, you know, he considered in that whole time with Zappa was, was a crash course in music theory, as he said. You know, working with Zappa, you know, you've got to be on your toes. You know, Adrian doesn't even read music, you know, which is not something that's very common in Zappa's band. Usually you've got to be able to read in order to be in his band. But, um, you know, Adrian just had this natural, he just had this natural uh, vibe about him, this, this very natural talent that was encouraged and uh, expanded when he got to meet the likes of Zappa and Bowie. And so he's touring with Bowie and they play Madison Square Garden and that's when the talking heads see him and they express an interest in working with him. So Baloo joins the talking heads for their live shows. He played on one of their albums called Remain in Light, which is one of their classic albums. Uh, and then he also played in this uh, Talking Heads offshoot band called the Tom Tom Club with the drummer uh, Chris Franz and his wife Tina, uh, who are great, by the way. Um, that's a whole nother story I could get into. I actually went to their house for dinner. I interviewed them many, many years ago. 
they were really cool. Although they had a bit of a falling out with Adrian over songwriting credits or something, from what I understand. Uh, I was actually going to reach out to Chris Franz uh, when I knew that I was going to see Baloo, uh, just to kind of, you know, see what he thought about Baloo after all these years. Maybe it's a good idea that I didn't reach out, because I don't know what things are like between the two of them now. But uh, Baloo, you may recall the Tom Tom Club, they had this hit called Genius of Love. You know, Adrian played on that song. He helped to write it. Uh, so after he parted ways with Talking Heads and the Tom Tom Club, he um, began to work with Robert Fripp. Now, of course, Robert Fripp, he was the founding member of King Crimson. You know, he he had disbanded Crimson back in the mid-70s, back in like 74, 75. And so he was looking to put together another band. And so um, he joined forces with Adrian Ballou. And so Adrian now is a member of this revamped, this retooled Crimson. Uh, in 1981, they put out this fantastic album called Discipline. Great, great stuff on, on this album. You know, uh, he, it was for the first time we had a lead singer who was writing the lyrics. You know, usually in Crimson, there was an outside writer. Uh, and for the first time, we had a dual guitar thing going on. Usually Fripp hired people who were great at playing drums or great at playing bass or other things but he never hired a bona fide guitar player to play with him. And so the whole dynamic in Crimson changed. Of course, that's nothing new to Crimson. They're always about changing things up. They're much different now than they were back in the 80s. As I said, Adrian's had a really long career with them. I remember when I heard that Crimson did not include Baloo on this latest go-round, I sent him a message on Facebook and I asked him, how come you're not a member of Crimson now? What's going on? And he just wrote back, uh, I wasn't asked. <laughs> and so I thought that was pretty funny. Um, I mean, it was sad. I, I was hoping he would be a part of it again, but uh, it was like, okay, well, what else can we talk about here? But no, Adrian, he's a great guy, you know, and he's done a lot. Like I said, worked with a lot of innovative artists uh, he's been innovative himself. You know, he put out this app called Flux, which you can get on the iPhone. It basically uh, features a lot of his music, but you don't hear the same song twice. When you hear the song a second time or a third time, there's something different about it. New instrumentation, you know, it just goes in a different direction, and it's something that he's actually incorporated into his live shows, too. Uh, he's also played with, like, Nine Inch Nails, He's played with Paul Simon. He was just a member of this super group called Gizmodrome that had Stuart Copeland of The Police and Mark King. Uh, he also got back with David Bowie uh, in 1990 when David Bowie did his Sound and Vision tour, uh, which was this big tour that Bowie was going to do where uh, he was going to, this was the last time that he was going to play his greatest hits. You go back and watch the footage of those shows and the rest of the band is like in the background. And it's Baloo and Bowie out front. That's what Bowie wanted. Uh, he was very close with Baloo. They were really good friends. And Baloo wanted to work with him again. But sadly, of course, you know, Bowie passed away. Baloo has just kept on going. He keeps on pushing his own boundaries. You know, in 2006, he wanted to put together a trio. And so he was approached by Paul Green of the School of Rock. And uh, Paul was like, look, if you want to do a trio, how, what, what do you think about working with a couple of my brightest students? And so Baloo was kind of skeptical at first. That's when he met Julie Slick and her brother Eric. And they got together and they performed and they got along really, really well. They made Adrian feel really young. <laughs> he actually did enjoy the whole youthful energy that they brought in because they were only like 18 or 19 when he first got with them. Uh, he wound up hiring them, took them on the road. They were known as the Adrian Ballou Power Trio and uh, they sounded great. And that's when I really was like, I got to see this Julie Slick live, you know, because she is such a tremendous bass player. You know, I always was really just 
in awe of her playing. And uh, I did get to see her with Adrian back uh, a few years ago when they played in Nashville. But this was the first time I got to really see them up close the way I did here at the Broadbury, um, which is where I caught them, the Broadbury in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, first time I've ever been to this venue. It's a really nice, little, cozy, intimate club. And you know, I really like those types of venues, you know, because you can get real up close and personal. I was in the second row. You really can't beat that. All right. So now, you know, I'm going to get into the show. I'm going to get into the set list, some stuff that he played. And, uh, you know, this show is really more of a career retrospective uh, for Adrian than what he's been doing lately. You know, he plays some Zappa. He plays some Crimson. Of course, he plays a lot of his own solo stuff, including some brand new stuff from a solo album called Pop Sided, which has just come out. It hasn't been released officially yet. He, it's only for sale at his shows. So the opener for Adrian on this tour is uh, his keyboard player, Saul Zonana. He comes out and he does a few songs. Uh, Saul plays to tracks, you know, fully produced tracks. It's a bit weird that he doesn't have a band playing with him and that, you know, we're hearing all these other instruments, but you can't see them. Uh, it's kind of strange. The songs are pretty good, actually. He was a pretty decent opener. Um, but you could tell that he needs to be working in the confines of a band. I think that would have made that opener a bit stronger. But um, he, he's, he's a great player, and he's been playing since he's a kid. I think Saul put his first album out when he was 13, and he's got many albums out. So anyway, uh, Adrian comes out, and he starts to show off with the King Crimson 80s classic Mate Kudasai. Just a real beautiful slower crimson tune. I love the guitar work on this song. You know, he makes his guitar sound like birds. You know, it's just a real nice effect. Great way to start the show. And then he goes into Big Blue Sun, which is one of his solo tunes. Uh, ampersand, great rocker there. Then he comes out with Happy With What You Have To Be Happy With, which is this uh, mouthful of a King Crimson song. This is from, uh, I think it was the last album he did with Crimson back in the 2000s, if my memory serves. Uh, not one of my favorite Crimson songs, but it's a good heavy track that works really good live. Uh, then there's the band Introductions. Uh, you know, Adrian had the band introduce themselves, you know, to each other, of course. You know, that was a pretty nice little move. Uh, and then they get into Young Lions and they play beatbox guitar and Everybody's Sitting, which I think is a new song. Everything that Adrian played from the new album actually sounded really good. Uh, the album has a bit more of a uh, pop side to it, which I guess is why it's called pop-sided, obviously. Uh, it's got more melodies, stronger melodies, than things that he's been doing recently, which have been, I don't know, a bit more instrumental. Uh, then he does Incompetence Indifference, Back in the Day, Fish Head and closes out the first set with the song called B, which is from his album E. Um, yeah, uh, the album E was this big, like I was just saying, this big instrumental piece, like 45 minutes long, broken up into different sections. B is one of them. And uh, it was a great, great song to end the first set with. I mean, one of the things that really blew me away uh, was Julie Slick on bass. She is amazing. Amazing. As a matter of fact, my friend was sitting next to me during the show. He he leans over to me and he says, man, the bass player is sick. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know. I mean, I really, you know, I was coming to see Adrian, but I also wanted to see Julie just as much because she is such a great bass player. Can't say enough good things about her. But, you know, she is the secret weapon of Adrian's band, you know. And I think he he knows that, too, which is why he still has her after all these years. Um, you know, he's been playing with her uh, in various little projects that he's had. And she truly is a gem of a bass player. Um, I would even go as far as to say that she's one of the greatest bass players probably out there now. You know, I would put her toe to toe with anybody. She's really, really good. So now we're kind of getting towards the latter part of the show and he pulls out some real classic stuff here. You know, City of Tiny Lights, great song that he performed 
with Frank Zappa, a song that he sung live. And I've got a video of that. Actually, I'm going to put a link up above to a companion playlist to this video loaded with all kinds of video clips throughout Adrian's career. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Uh, then he gets into Three of a Perfect Pair from King Crimson. Always did love that song. And uh, as a matter of fact, I recently uh, saw a version done by the School of Rock were three of a perfect pair. I thought the kids in that video, they were no more than, what, 17 years old maybe? Um, just killing it. Amazing. I put that in the playlist too for you. Then we get into Frame by Frame. Great, great track from the Discipline album. Um, and then Sleepless. I was so glad to see this. I mean, Sleepless, one of my favorite songs from Crimson from the 80s period. Um, just a great song, especially for bass. You know, it's got a really good bass riff in it, and Julie kills it. I mean, Julie's been killing it all night. You know, it's like if I wasn't watching Adrian, I was watching Julie. Like, between the two of them. They, they could have been the only ones on stage. They, were, they, they are a tremendous team. I can't say that enough. And then uh, the, he pulls out Neil and Jack and Me, which is a song from the Beat album that uh, Crimson did back in the 80s, the one that came after Discipline. Uh, that's a real rarity there. That's a song that uh, this might be the first time he's ever playing it live or one of the few times. And then closes out the set with E, the title track from the album E. Uh, and they, of course, kill that. You know, Adrian is uh, really great at making full use of his guitar. You know, he plays every inch of it. Like, you've probably heard people talk about how, you know, if you kill an animal, you should eat the whole thing. You know, you should do something with, you know, of course, the meat, but you should use the bones and the organs and, you know, like use the whole animal from head to toe. Well, Adrian does the same thing with his guitar. He devours the whole thing. He'll play on the fretboard. He'll play up in the area where the where you tune it. He'll play at the top, at the bottom, and everywhere along the way. He's using the whammy bar. You know, Adrian's known as the uh, twang bar king. You know, I've never seen anybody use the whammy bar the way Adrian does. He's always, it looks like he's always conjuring sounds out of his instrument. It's just amazing. Uh, and of course, Julie, as I've been saying, Julie was, you know, she was just a pleasure to watch. You know, really enjoyed watching Julie. So then we get to the encore of the show, which is uh, King Crimson's Thela Hunjinjit. And you're probably wondering, what the hell is a Thela Hunjinjit? Actually, it's an anagram. And an anagram is where you take uh, letters from words and you mix them up and you make another word. And so Thela Hunjinji is an anagram for heat in the jungle. Uh, it's a song that Crimson was writing about crime in the city, you know, and uh, Adrian was looking for some uh, inspiration. So he took this tape recorder and he left the studio. He took a walk outside, walked around the block, and he stumbled upon this Rastafarian gang. And they were involved in some like illegal gambling or something. And so they surrounded Baloo and they were like intimidating. They, they thought that he was a cop and they took his tape recorder and they were like listening to what he was saying on it because Baloo was just like talking some stuff into it. And they, they thought that he was a cop. And so they wind up letting him go. And so when Baloo goes back to the studio, he starts telling Robert Fripp what had just happened. But he didn't know that Robert Fripp had tape rolling. And so Fripp captured Baloo telling this whole story, which is on the song. That's the narrative that you hear Baloo saying over the song. So it's a really interesting tune, um, full of just great jams, great bass line on it. Great way to end the show. Of course, Baloo is a freak on the guitar. Julie Slick, as she had been doing throughout the whole show, just, you know, laying down some solid bass lines. Uh, this band was a real pleasure and a real treat to see live. And uh, Adrian mentioned that he would love to come back again and play, and I hope he does. I would go, you know, there's not, not every band that I go see would I necessarily go see again. You know, for some bands, it's like, all right, I saw them. 
I don't really need to see them again. I think I've had enough. But there's other bands that you're so into their live performance. You know, it, it almost doesn't matter what they play. You just love to see them do what they do. And uh, for Adrian Ballou and his band, his new band, this is a perfect example of that. If you want to go check out a great band, a great night out, go check out Adrian Ballou. Uh, he's on tour right now with dates through the summer, so uh, be sure to check it out. Let me know if you've ever seen Adrian, if you've seen this tour, if you're going to go see this tour. What do you think about him? What do you think about the stuff he's done with Zappa and Bowie and Crimson? Put it down below. Let me know what you think. Be sure to uh, hit the like button if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button too. Uh, also, check out the community tab on my YouTube channel. Uh, I often post stuff in there and you can interact with, with me there. And uh, also check out the video companion playlist. I'll put a link to it below with a bunch of stuff, a bunch of you know interviews and old clips and videos from Adrian and Crimson and Bowie and Zappa. That's all below too. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. I've got more coming soon, so uh, stay tuned. And as always, thanks so much for stopping by. And, uh, and I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you very much.